More than 90% of solids are crystalline, meaning that they have a repeating arrangement of their constituent parts that provides a long-range order to structure. Since the properties of a crystal can depend on the nature of this repeating arrangement, we're going to spend a little time talking about the smallest repeating unit, known as the unit cell, and how that produces long-range order, known as the lattice. If you take the unit cell and repeat it in all three dimensions, you get a crystal. In this example, the unit cell is a cube, and so the repeating lattice is also cubic, much like children's blocks that are stacked neatly. Lattice points are the locations of key parts of the structure, usually atoms or molecules, that repeat throughout the lattice. There are quite a variety of different unit cell types that crystalline solids can have, only a few of which are cubic, like the one I showed you a moment ago. If you delve deeper into inorganic chemistry, you will study many of the others, but for the purposes of this class, we will focus on the cubic ones and a single one of the others. Conveniently enough, the simplest cubic unit cell is known as simple cubic. For the moment, let's assume we are looking at a metal or an atomic solid, so that the lattice points are individual atoms. Notice as well that each of these atoms is at a corner of the unit cell. This means that each atom is part of eight different unit cells. That means that a single unit cell, which has eight corners, contains eight partial atoms. Each partial atom is one-eighth of the whole, so the unit cell contains one atom. Another important metric is coordination number, which is a measure of how many nearest neighbors a lattice point has. In this case, we can see that each lattice point has six nearest neighbors, and so its coordination number is six. Notice that the distance between adjacent lattice points is two atomic radii, or uh, the, an atomic diameter. This means that if we can measure the unit cell size, which we can do by X-ray or electron diffraction, we can measure the size of atoms. But even without determining the size, we can figure out something else about this structure. Let's call the atomic radius R. That means the volume of the unit cell is 2R, the quantity cubed. And the volume of an atom, if we consider it to be a sphere, is 4 thirds pi R cubed. And we already determined that each unit cell contains one atom. So the fraction of the unit cell that is taken up by the atom is just this ratio. The R's cancel, and we find that only 52% of the unit cell is taken up by atoms. This is what is known as the packing efficiency. What's the rest? Well, it's the hole in the middle. 52% isn't a very efficient use of space, so we would expect that most solids will not form in a simple cubic arrangement. In fact, the only metal that does so is polonium. So how can we get tighter packing? Well, the first thought might be to fill in the hole with another atom. Now to do so, the corner atoms are going to have to get pushed out a bit, but we can do that. This gives us a unit cell known as body-centered cubic, or BCC. Note though that this picture taken from your textbook is wrong, because it looks in it like there's a gap between the corners and the central atom. There isn't. This picture is better. Let's do some of the same types of calculations we did for simple cubic on this structure. First, how many atoms are there in a unit cell? Well, we have the same corners, but now we have an atom that is entirely within the cell, giving us a total of two. What's the coordination number? Well, the central sphere is in contact with each of the corners, so eight. But what if we are looking for the coordination number for one of the corners? Well, watch this animation closely. First, we look at one unit cell. Now we add on some more in each direction. Now let's see what happens if we redefine the unit cell so that the red spheres are at the corners. And finally, let's remove what's outside the newly redefined unit cell. What we have now is a body-centered cubic cell, just with the red and gray spheres swapped. A body-centered cubic lattice is just two identical simple cubic lattices offset from each other, and it makes no difference which we choose to be our center and which we choose to be our corners. And the coordination number of every atom is 8. Finally, for a body-centered cubic structure, let's calculate the packing efficiency. To do that, we need to recognize that the body diagonal is 4 atomic radii. A couple of applications of the Pythagorean theorem, and we find that the side of a unit cell is 4 over the square root of 3, r. We can now find the volume of the unit cell, and in that unit cell we now have two atoms. 
and a bit of algebra later, we find that the body-centered cubic unit cell has a packing efficiency of 68%. Much better than simple cubic, and there are quite a few metals that have body-centered cubic structure, including all of the alkali metals, the vanadium and chromium groups, and room temperature iron. We can do even better though. Again, starting with simple cubic, let's now expand the corners and add an atom to the center of each face to give us face-centered cubic, or FCC. Again, the textbook picture isn't great because you can't see what's touching and what isn't. This picture is better. Again, let's do the calculations. Atoms per unit cell. Again, the corners are the same as for simple cubic, but now we have six faces, each with half of an atom in the center, to give us a total of four. Coordination number? We have to look closely for this one. Let's focus on the blue atom here. The atoms in the back of this unit cell clearly don't touch it, so we'll remove them. But remember that this blue atom extends into an adjacent unit cell. And while the corners are the same, the red atoms in that adjacent cell are different. So let's add those in as well. So we have 12 nearest neighbors, and that is our coordination number. Finally, for our packing efficiency, we notice that the face diagonal is four atomic radii. So the side of the unit cell, after applying the Pythagorean theorem, is 2 times the square root of 2, r. And so with some algebra, we find that the packing efficiency for face-centered cubics uh, unit cell is 74%. This is, in fact, the most efficient packing that is geometrically possible. So it is also called cubic closest packing. This is a common packing arrangement for metals, including silver, aluminum, calcium, copper, nickel, lead, and platinum. There's another way to visualize the FCC structure. Let's rotate the crystal, remove the coloring, and recolor it based on the layers. And now we'll remove some of the top layers so that we can see the structure a bit better. Notice that each layer is a hexagonal pattern of spheres, and that the layers stack in a way that each sphere is nestled down into a crevice between the spheres on a previous layer. This is how oranges are stacked in a grocery store. Let's look at the stacking of these layers a little closer. When we bring in layer 2, we'll put it over some of the holes in the previous layer. But notice that layer 2 only covers half of the holes. That means that for layer 3, we have a choice. We can bring in layer 3 to cover the other holes from layer 1, like this, or we can bring it in directly over the layer 1 atoms, like this. Both of these are closest packed structures, but their layer ordering is different. The left version, which has an ABC-ABC arrangement of layers, is FCC, also known as CCP. The right version, which is an ABAB arrangement of layers, is hexagonal closest packing, or HCP. This is the one case that we will be handling in this class that does not have a cubic unit cell. Metals that crystallize in this structure include cadmium, cobalt, lithium, magnesium, sodium, and zinc. So that's metals. But we also know that ionic compounds tend to form crystals. Usually because they are larger, the anions tend to form a closest packed array, either cubic or hexagonal, and the smaller cations tend to sit in holes between the anions. There are two types of these holes, or interstices. Octahedral, which for cubic closest packing lie along the edges of the unit cell, and tetrahedral, which for cubic closest packing lie in each octant of the body of the unit cell. These sites are named for how many nearest neighbors of the opposite ion they have. Small cations tend to occupy tetrahedral holes, while larger cations occupy octahedral holes. Cations that are too large to fit into the octahedral holes may cause the anions to adopt a more open structure, like simple cubic. An example of an ionic crystal is sodium chloride. Here we can see that the chloride ions, green in this picture, form a face-centered cubic lattice, and the sodium ions, shown in purple, occupy the octahedral interstices.